Welcome to the Sneaker Game, and I'm your host, Christ Young. In this show, we're gonna give you a deeper glimpse into the sneaker culture. I'll be speaking to some avid shoe collectors, visiting some exclusive sneaker spots, and restoration joints. I'll be interviewing celebrities and athletes and have them showcase their collections. We're going to highlight some of the top sneaker brands in the industry and attend well-known sneaker conventions around the globe. As an avid sneaker collector myself, I'm excited to show you what we have in store. This is The Sneaker Game. The first pair of sneakers I had that I could remember really falling in love was the number eights. I'll never forget, my dad bought me and my older brother the number eights, the black joints, the black with the little white and red on the side. Yeah, I remember those with the DKNY sweater. It was flea. I got to that point when I was a kid, I had little feet, so like I had an older brother, right? So his, his shoes was a lot bigger than mine, so I used to be able to get two pair of sneakers, and his sneakers, was he was in men's, so his was more. Because I was in kids, it was a little elite, so I could get like two pairs. So it got to the point where I was just like trying to finesse getting three pairs, and my mom was like, no, you can't get it. But it's like, I never, I never could have enough. Like even if I have the newest Jordans or the newest Pippins or whatever came out, newest Jason kids, like the newest Barclays, like I will always want more. Like, so that's why I knew it was gonna be a problem. It just got worse as I got older because I can buy my own. And I have to wait on my mom, you know? The first pair of kicks I bought on my own had to be the number 11 Jordans, the 11s, patent leathers, low top, Easter. Saved up my money, I was working at a meat market at that time, I was young, I was still in like, I was still in school, like I wasn't even finished school, I was just hustling, always trying to get this money. I saved up my money and for Easter, I remember I bought the white and red one. As you can see, I have a variety of everything, you know, um, but I love ones, I love the Jordan ones, that's one of my favorite kicks, even today, so like to date. The Jordan ones will always be a classic, like these, always be a classic. You can never go wrong with a pair of Jordan ones, like, Never, ever, ever. The money I spent on sneakers, I wish I could've just put that towards a crib or something. You know what I'm saying? If I could've did it all over, I'd put it on a, I'd buy a house, put it on down payment to a house or something. You know, or get a Maserati or something, you know? But that's, that's when you come into like the addiction, it's an addiction. You know, the sneaker culture is a lot of people with sneaker heads everywhere, you know? And there's people that got way bigger collections than me. This ain't even everything. Like, if you see, the, this ain't even everything. It's like, I got sneakers all over. Like, I got sneakers at my cousin's house. Whole sneaker, uh, closet full. I couldn't even get, because he's out of town right now. Like, it would have been way more worse than this. Like, this is not even nothing. Like, this ain't shit. I just copped the, the blush joints, the blush Yeezys. You know what I'm saying? These shits are straight. Um, I, I'm kind of like doing like foreigns too. I bought the Balenciagas not too long ago too for my birthday, and those is a pretty penny. I wanna get some more, um, definitely some more Yeezy 700s. We got some dope 700s coming out. You know what I mean? I like the 500s too. 500s is straight. I wanna get some more of these, with black ones probably, you know, whatever new colors they got coming out. I'm with the Yeezy wave right now. I like Dunks too, you know, number ones, any type of ones. I'm probably about to start getting me some more off-white ones. Probably grab all the off-white ones if I can get my hands on them. We're gonna go to some sneaker conventions. We're gonna have a lot of fun too. So I'm gonna be picking up sneakers too. There. So it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. Oh, Jordan heads. Yeah, yeah. That's a snow and bed star. Um, Jordan heads. They have like so many exclusive sneakers. They have like Jordan jerseys. It's hard to find. It's gonna be pretty cool, man. I hope a lot of people appreciate the Jordan head store and what they bring to the culture because it's really nice and it's a lot of nostalgia when you go in there. It's gonna be cool, we're gonna have fun. Jordan Heads uh, was established four years ago okay. um, from um, doing a lot of filming. Uh, people that collect sneakers, Jordans in particular, 
we felt, well, my cousin came to me, he said, you know, these folks need to have a place to buy their shoes. You know, a lot of online shops was around and uh, a lot of bootleggers was um, selling these shoes to these folks. And they had basically nowhere to go. You know? So he was like, yo, let's, let's make a store for them. And he didn't have to ask me twice, it, let's do it. And thus came Jordan Heads Brooklyn. Basically, give me a concept behind the idea of the store of Jordan Heads. Well, the idea, as I mentioned, was um, these folks going to these sneaker stores and buying these shoes. And a lot of times they would have to stand online or camp out and get raffles. And a lot of times the sneakers wasn't even there on the shelves. So we, um, well, he said, well, let's make this store for them. And not only just sneakers, you know, the entire store would be dedicated to the true Jordan head. You know, people that really, and people that really love Jordan. There are people that really, really love Michael Jordan. Crazy. So that's what this store represents. People come in here, they love everything Jordan. And you're gonna see everything Jordan in here. Everything is related to Michael Jordan. So other than sneakers, besides Jordan sneakers, what else can we buy here? Is there any other services that you, you do here or anything else other than sneakers? Well, yeah, um, other than sneakers, we have apparel and vintage items from um, collectors that we acquired over the years. We have um, our own brand, Jordan Heads Brooklyn brand. We have backpacks, boards. We did a, a skateboard line. Dope. Yeah. Um, that's not it, but um, we have some sort of soft uh, cleaning services where you know, we contact someone that could clean sneakers or we could sell the items right here if you like to clean your shoes. So you deal with like a sneaker restorer or you do like restoration services, services as well, like if somebody cracks, their sneakers get a little cracked or you know, they need to get a little bit of rubbish off. You can also, they can come here and you can take care of them and make sure that they can get their sneakers back to a little bit to where it was before. Well, not exactly. We, if they come here with that, we could um, provide information for them okay. to get it taken care of. Okay. So they, they do come to the right place because okay. we have those connections. Which Jordans do you seem to get the most requests for? Like, which one do people usually come in and just, they ask directly, just specifically for that one? The, uh, the Jordans that the people come here looking for, I could safely say, is the, short, the, the shoe that they wanted for the longest time and can't get. Mm -hmm. So that, sh that, that shoe varies. Mm -hmm. You know, someone could like uh, a Jordan 1 Chicago or whatever, and you could never get it unless you shop online or possibly go somewhere else and it might be a fake. Mm -hmm. So there's no specific shoe that people look for here. It's basically the shoe that they wanted for the longest. You know what I'm saying? Everyone has that shoe. And a lot of times we get those folks in here and they tell us the story about those shoes. Mm -hmm. Basically, what you're saying is if someone wanted any Jordan sneaker that's ever coming out, you could just basically make your phone calls or somehow get your hands on the sneakers to give to the people. They come to request it and somehow you work your Jordan magic and boom, those sneakers that they wanted in their head or in their thoughts, it appears right here and they pay for it and then they can walk out happy, basically. Well, not exactly. Well, yes, but no, the, the, the shoes are quite rare. Okay. Yeah, and it's very hard to get, even for us. So if they come here, we, we try to help them out the best way we can, and we do have an answer for them, you know. We do have a, you know, some sort of provision where they can go get the shoe, Okay. all right? Okay. If we don't have it, you know, those are, that's a tall order. You know, somebody comes in here with a, a request and we have it, whew, that's, that'll be dope. So that's love, so you have a lot of, you have a lot of requests that someone may, might have thought you didn't have, but then you end up having it in the back and they didn't even know you had it in the back. Well, yeah, sometimes it works that way, but for the most part, it's, it's difficult. That's how rare a lot of these shoes are and hard to get. Mm. Okay. The sneaker awesome. game, the sneaker game is quite extensive. Well, can you tell us about your clothing line? 
Um, our closing line, I can tell you a lot about our closing line. When we first opened up the store, the main premise was to branch off into our own brand. You know, we have to build a brand and we can't rely on Jordan, you know, forever, you know. People want to come to a place and know the brand where they're getting the shoe or item from. So we try to sell everything that, um, you know, people like that will wear. It could be a hat, a hoodie, a track suit, uh, even tote bags, everything that our brand has or other brands sell. You know, we try to you try to try put to it. I notice how I'm looking around right now. I notice how a lot of the hats and uh, hoodies it resembles a lot of sneakers that you have here. So it's, let's say it makes it easier for you to make the brand your your clothing line because hey, all right, if I buy the three the number three cements, you know, you can you can throw it right with that. It's the same yeah. color tone. We, or if I get some white and red Chicago's or yes. ones, you got the hat right there, or yeah. you got the scully hat over here. Yeah. So we try to keep it in the same colorway as the shoe. So what is one of your most fondest moments of Michael Jordan while he played in the NBA? The most fondest moment of Michael Jordan is not good, you know why? Because <laughs> he destroyed my fucking Knicks, right? <laughs> fucking. As a I New fucking, Yorker, I feel your pain, I'm, man. I'm like, I feel your pain. This fucking guy, man, like really had to come here to the, our garden or we go over there to the United Center and they, he just destroys us with all the, the jumpers. Bad memories, man. Pippin. Rodman. Rodman, yeah. Getting all those reads, he's, he used to sit down near the bench, put all these bandages on and wrap his feet up, just sit there and then come in and tear us up on the boards. And this Jordan, you know, I like Jordan, all right? But I don't like him for that. You know, <laughs> messed up my Knicks. That if you ask me, the Knicks are messed up since that day, since that, that era. God damn, Jordan. <laughs> so now we got a store for you, Jordan. All right? <laughs> what you did to my Knicks. Thank you. We got a store for Michael Jordan <laughs> representing you. All right, so all right, let's take you back to Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Right? Garden. John Starks. Mecca. John Starks, he take the sideline. Yeah, Starks with three. He go up for the slam dunk, right? Yeah. Who's under the who's under the uh, rim? Uh, Horace and Jordan, right? Yeah. MJ, right? Yeah. Did John Starks catch a body? Yes, he did. He caught him. He <sighs> caught that motherfucker. Made a, they even made a poster about it. That's how, <laughs> that's how dope it was. Made it, he made history, all right? Starks against Jordan. That's dope. Classic. But, yeah. Do you remember where you were and what you were doing and how did it make you feel when you saw it happen? Did you actually see it happen back in the day? Yes, I was. At home, again, watching the Nick game, expecting a big old blowout. Just fucking Jordan, fucking come here, blow up my Knicks. And I seen the dunk, I'm like, oh my God. No, no way that happened. I used to live on, in uh, Dean Street, uh, Prospect Heights, Brooklyn. Mm. Little apartment there. And I was like, what did I just see? Stocks? Dunked on, and it was, it was magical. <laughs> classic, classic. Have you ever gotten into like arguments or debates with people about that? That one well, play? Um, arguments about the dunk, the most famous dunk in the history of basketball. Um, <laughs> was, seems to be <laughs> seems to be only now on social media because with the Le LeBron phenomenon coming yeah. up and everybody want to say he's the GOAT and Jordan and someone- And Kobe. And, and Kobe and someone always throws in that, you know, uh, Starks dunk to, uh, you know, to twist the story a little bit. Shake then, it up. Yeah, to shake it up a little bit. Then the, the story goes from Jordan or LeBron to the dunk. And I'm reading the comments. I'm like, really, these people, they go in and out all around it <laughs> it was a dunk it, he, he dunked on jordan period it is what it, it is, is right it, it is all what it is line. in your honest opinion right out of all the jordans we have in here right we got a lot yeah. it's a lot yeah what is your top pair of all time of jordans in your opinion 
The top it's gonna pair, be debatable. I know it's gonna the, be debatable. The, the, the top, it, you know what? The, my best pair, it, it shouldn't be a debate because it's mine. You know, it's what I like. To me, the sneaker is like a work of art. So if you like this painting, cool. You don't. If you like that painting, cool, or you don't. Whatever. So me, I'm a one guy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's my if you, man. If you see me, you're gonna always see me in the one, right? I always. love ones. Ones is one of my old time right? favorites, man. One. You wanna see me in the one. There's something about this shoe, the way it's cut, the way it's shaped, the way it's shaped, the, I'm not even gonna go into color. It's just, it looks good on my feet. And I got big feet, all you ladies out there, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and those are the shoes that look good on my feet. The others look nice, but I can't have a shoe that's too, much, too bulky on a yeah. size 12 foot. Yeah. Nah, it's not gonna work. So I'm a one guy. These these shoes, look at this. And I'm not the only one that go towards the one. A lot of shoe designers, when they do their luxury shoe, when they, when they do their luxury shoe, they model it after a one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that tells you a lot right there. They ain't doing a six. They're not doing a three or a four. They're doing a one. As far as the Jordan brand goes, what do you think is the next Jordan that's coming out, like the next best thing that's, that everybody's gonna go crazy for? Like whether retro or new, is there any Jordan that you've seen people, you know, well, anticipating? Well, um, that's, a, that's a tough question because we follow a lot of social media on the, the sneaker game, right? Yeah. And every release, uh, Jordan release or whatever. And there are sneakers that, um, that we see that's gonna be released that's driving a lot of interest. They did a release last week of Rookie of the Year and it uh, sold out quite well, but mm. there's a few in, in store still on the shelves. And um, there's others that you can't even get your hands on that we thought wouldn't even sell, mm. that just wiped out so quickly and it's selling for hundreds by resellers. So it's always a hit or miss, basically, yes. when a new Jordan, even even though it may be a fire yeah. pair Jordans, it may be a, a dope pair. Yeah. Sometimes it's based on how people are feeling, I mean, yeah. they may be feeling it, they may be not, nah, yeah. so it's always a hit or miss yeah. with it. It's, it's tough, it's a tough call. So it's, it's, it's tough to get a handle on like that. That's why, um, reseller, we can't buy these shoes beforehand, because mm. if you cop them beforehand, it's not a good sell. It's gonna be sitting on your shelf. Yeah. As a reseller, you want your joints in and out. Yeah. That's, like a used car salesman. You can't have your car sitting on a lot. You gotta move them, you gotta move that product. What do, you, what do you have going on for the future and what's next for the company? Well, what's next for Jordan Heads is we want other locations. You know what I'm saying? We wanna expand and I would like to get that on a shirt. Jordan Heads, Tokyo, LA, Miami. Mm -hmm. Even Atlanta, you know, something like that. That would be dope for us to move in that direction. This is, that's what our goal was from Jump Street, to get more locations as a retailer. Mm -hmm. And if possible, even on the market, go public. That's my goal. And do you have any like uh, films or documentaries? Because this is a cool thing, like with Jordan Heads and just the, the nostalgia alone in this store. It's just a lot of nostalgia, even the posters. Uh, look, we got, he got game over here. Look, we got Ron, we even got Ron Harper, rock, Ron Harper daughter rocking the uh, jersey yeah. over there. We got like all types of vintage photos. And look, we got the Wheaties boxes over here. Like something I haven't seen since like 1992. Yeah. You know, it's a real deal you, too. I see, I Real see. Deal. Do you have any documentaries or anything that's going like to shed more light yeah. on what's going um, on? This store, the concept of the store was based on a documentary me and my cousin is uh, involved with. He's shooting and I'm helping him out. And that's part of the goals too. They get that documentary on a silver screen. Mm -hmm. And to get this store selling all the merchandise from the movie. Mm -hmm. Like Star Wars, why not? If they can do it, Lucas or whatever, we can do it. Why not? That's my goal. I want to be like George Lucas. So if anybody's looking for Jordan Heads, um, we right here, Jordan Heads, Brooklyn, New York. 
Where's, where can we find? Where's, Yo, you can location? find us, right? If you're looking for us in the heart of Brooklyn, Best Eye, the home of Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? This is where Jordan, Michael Jordan was born, all right? Jackie Robinson Way is right here, another Brooklyn icon. You can find us at 302 Malcolm X Boulevard, Bed Stuy. Instagram, Facebook, and everything else. Website, jordanheadsbrooklyn.com, JHBK, or jordanheadsmovie.com. We're all over the place. There you have it. <laughs> We're here at Jordan Heads, Brooklyn, the Sneaker Game.